and welcome to this presentation on Active Passive Disaster Recovery, or DR for short, using Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager. In this video, we'll use the Oracle Solution Center's workshop environment to demonstrate the Active Passive DR process. A description of who they are and the workshops they offer can be found at the end of the video. Let's talk about what we'll cover in this video. First, we'll define what Active Passive Disaster Recovery is. Next, we'll cover the site requirements for the active primary site and the passive secondary site. Then, we'll follow the process of initiating a failover to the secondary site, followed by a failback to the primary site. The active passive solution uses two separate Oracle Linux virtualization manager environments configured as an active primary site and a passive secondary site or backup site. When the environment experiences an outage, you manually trigger failover using Ansible playbooks that you create. And there are three that are required and one that is optional. There's a playbook to create a file to map entities on the primary and secondary sites. Then there's a failover playbook and a failback playbook. You can also create an optional playbook to clean the primary site before failing back. We'll use these playbooks during our demonstrations. Before we begin our demos, let's review site requirements. Let's we'll start with the primary site. The primary site should be a fully functioning Oracle Linux virtualization manager environment, meaning the site has an engine host managing data centers and clusters, installed KVM posts inside the clusters with attached logical networks, Phoenix, and virtual machines, and with storage domains that replicate its contents outside the data center. We'll explore more of this soon. For this type of disaster recovery to work, we need a pre-configured secondary environment. This environment needs an active engine host running the identical versions of the engine and Postgres SQL software as the primary. We need data centers and clusters at the same compatibility levels as the primary. Of course, we need an active KVM host for running the virtual machines after the failover and networks at the same general connectivity as the primary site. So what about the storage we need for the VMs? The virtual disk and template stored on the primary storage domain is replicated to a location that is not attached to the secondary site. During a failover, this replicated data is then imported to a data center on the secondary site. We'll see this transition in an upcoming demonstration. Now, let's demonstrate active passive failover and failback. We begin by showing our very critical production system is up and running. This is evident from the live system clock on the production VM's web page. Next, we'll simulate a disaster by switching to the virtual machines page of the administration portal and selecting our production VM from the list, and then clicking shutdown and power off to bring the system to a sudden and complete halt. We click OK to confirm our choice, and then the triangle icon to the left of the VM transitions from green to red, and the notification pop-up lets us know that our production VM is no longer running. Before we run the failover playbook, we need to reverse the replicated storage from the primary site to the secondary site. Though not part of the failover playbook, it needs to be done because of the way our storage appliance manages replication. The Ansible server is where we'll run the scripts for storage tasks and our playbook. So we'll flip over to our Ansible server and run the switch-s2-s1 script to perform this reversal. After the reversal completes, we can deploy the failover playbook. A quick word about playbooks. Creating playbooks is beyond the scope of this video, so please refer to the Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager Administration Guide for examples and detailed guidance. What's missing in the video capture is running the playbook that created a map file containing the primary site's entities. A mapping file is crucial when restoring continuity on the secondary site and returning it back. The mapping playbook populates the primary site's entities into a YAML file. Then you manually add to the YAML file the site-specific entities for the secondary entities, such as its IP addresses, cluster, affinity groups. And to recap and continue the scenario, our production VM is down, and we have reversed replication, so now we can initiate the failover. So at the prompt on the Ansible server, we paste the command ansible-playbook space failover-s2-s1.yml space dash dash tag space 
double quotes, fail underscore over space dash dash ask dash vault dash pass. Shortly, we'll see some iSCSI errors in red. These are expected as the playbook is attempting to log into the iSCSI targets. So let's go over to the secondary site and observe what is happening on the storage domains. From the Virtual Machines page, we click on Storage and then Domains to view the page. Notice the lock icon next to prod s1. The playbook is in the process of importing the replicated storage. Shortly, a message appears telling us that the storage domain has finished attaching itself to the data center. The status icon turns green. Let's go back to the Virtual Machines page and check the status of our production VM. A quick refresh of the page shows a gray status icon next to the VM. Not too long after, we get a message letting us know that the import is completed and the icon changes to indicate the VM is booting. Give it a little more time and then the VM is up and running. Let's assume repairs to our production site are complete and we can now restore operations back to our primary production site. So we begin preparing our environments for payback. The first thing we need to do is run the clean primary playbook to clean the primary site. After that, we need to restore replication back to the production site. Then we can run the failback playbook and begin restoring operations to our production site. And the last thing that needs to be done is reverse replication and restore access to the replicated storage. We'll go back to the Ansible server and from there execute the clean primary playbook. This will prepare the primary for our failback. So at the command line, we enter ansible-playbook space clean underscore primary dot YML space dash dash tag in double quotes clean underscore engine space dash dash ask dash vault dash pass. In our scenario, the playbook does not take too long to complete. After it does, we take a quick look on the secondary. The status of our production VM shows that it's still up and running. Back on the primary, we first see that our VM is in the same state it was before the failover. A quick refresh of the browser now shows that the VM has been removed during the cleanup. Now let's look at the storage domain page. And no remaining artifacts of our domain are shown. So we're ready to move on to the next step. In this step, we restore the replication back to the production site. So at the command line on the Ansible server, we enter the replicate-s2-s1-sh command to execute the restoration. Short order, we're ready to move on to the failback step. Now it's time to run the failback playbook and start restoring operations back to our production site. The command we'll run is ansible-playbook space failback-s1-s2.yml space dash dash tags space double quotes fail underscore back space dash dash ask dash vault dash pass. There is a pause coded in this playbook where we need to run the switch dash s1 dash s2 dot sh script to reverse replication and restore access back to production. We have reached the point where we need to run the reverse replication script. So we'll go to another window logged into the Ansible server and execute the script. After the script completes, our storage domain is ready for use on the production system. So we go back to the session running the playbook and hit enter to continue. In our demo environment, it takes about 10 seconds or so. When we get back to the prompt, we'll switch to the playbook window and continue. While the playbook runs, we'll monitor progress from the primary site. We begin on the storage domains page. Our prod-s2 domain does not appear in the list yet, so I'll click the bell icon and monitor system events. Our storage domain quickly appears showing a lock status. Viewing events is a helpful way of monitoring progress and troubleshooting events. To save time, I've shortened the elapsed time about 30 seconds. Eventually, the green notification window appears with a note saying the storage domain is now attached to the data center and the status icon goes green. Next, we'll check status of our production VM on the virtual machines page. 
Our VM appears in the list with the status of down. It quickly transitions from down to booting to eventually up and running. As we can see when I switch to a web page monitoring the status of this VM, I would like to acknowledge the Oracle Solutions Center for their contribution to this video. Here's some more information about them. Please contact them with your needs. And thanks for watching. This concludes the video.